Hi, and welcome to Create, Automate, and Scale podcast. Tune in to this inspirational, straight-to-the-point, relatable content for entrepreneurs to help you mastermind the everyday hassle, give you business tips, networking opportunities, shameless money talks, and scaling secrets. Created to support you, to support coaches and course creators just like you, to help you take action, stop trading dollars for hours, and explode your business. It's time to hit that six-figure and beyond. Let's go. Welcome to Create, Automate, and Scale podcast. Hi, I'm Sophie Riley, and I'm your host. Today, we get to have a conversation with the one and only Janine Hawk. We are going to have a conversation about the three reasons why foolproof strategies are working for everyone but you. So buckle up. This is going to be an awesome conversation. Janine is a mindset coach, entrepreneur, wife, and mom to three little ones, five years old and younger. She unlocks ambitious women's potential, full potential, by creating an environment where they can explore what the life of their dreams look like. Once you discover the abundance that is already your life and your past reason for not living your biggest life, you can begin to break down the barriers around you and start seeing the results you desire in every area of your life. By practicing this herself, She has created the opportunity to collaborate with women around the world. Welcome to this conversation, Janine. Hi, Sophie. I'm so excited that we get to have this conversation today. Me too, because you know what? Though I have grown a lot in this business, this is definitely over the first few years, you know, the years where I was working like a complete insane person, like a workaholic on working on a hobby. And I was earning 2K a year. I'm not going to lie. I asked myself this probably every single day. So I feel that this is definitely something that one is going to relate to. Yeah, I know. I've personally felt it myself. I've signed up for coaches, been in programs, and they're like, you're going to achieve 100,000 in six weeks, and it's going to be amazing. And you'll have all of this spare time doing it and all of these lovely things. And then you get there and you're like, what's wrong with me? It didn't work for me. I see that you're posting all of these results. What's wrong with me? Why aren't I getting there? And I mean, first mistake is thinking anything at all is possibly wrong with you. (laughs) You know what? The go-to response to this online space when you're working really hard, you're doing all the things, but you're not getting the results, The number one response is, well, you just have to change your mindset. But I feel like this is probably, though true, the most useless sentence I have ever heard in my entrepreneur journey because I was like, but I want it a lot. How dare you say Mm -hmm. that I'm not motivated? How dare you say that I don't have the mindset? I really want this. So I'm really excited. So let's dive in in into three reasons why this foolproof method is not working. Yeah. And I think to the point that you said, like, as soon as someone said it's just mindset, it is scary as hell because it's not anything you can do. It's no longer about like, I'll just build another funnel. I'll just set up this page. I'll just, there's no longer that. What you have to do is actually turn inside and what habits are you repeating? What things have you picked up from other people that you have decided to create on your own? What blocks do you have? And so that leads into the three reasons why strategies that foolproof work for everyone aren't working for you. And it really, it breaks down to one, is the goal aligned? Two, do you have blocks to it? And three, do you have accountability to make sure that happens? Okay, I love these three. I mean, I have to say that the third one, the accountability is my favorite, but Mm. it's so true. Just thinking about my feelings makes me want to do anything else, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) That's why it's so important if you're aware of that about yourself and to be honest, 
everybody. There's very few people who are like, yes, let's dig into the feelings and the things that I need to change about myself. Let's dig like, who is that person? Who is that? I mean, I'm going to need a whole lot more wine for this conversation. (laughs) So, I mean, that is completely valid. But in that case, if you can be self-aware of that, that's when you just get a coach and you don't have to. It gets to be easier. I get to, like, if you have a coach like me, I get to see those things simply for you. So it's not tied in all of the emotions, in all of the feelings, in all of the doubts about yourself. I, when I'm um, coaching someone, I'm not looking at it through the scopes of their feelings and like how hard it'll be and their past experiences. I'm looking at how we can do it simply and easily now, because once we get tangled up in feelings, it's just, it slows down the process and it actually doesn't allow you to see things honestly. It allows you to see things painted in lenses of your past experiences it's it's really putting on different colored glasses I love that now let's dive into each one of those reasons so I know the first one is the habits so I'll go first I'll go first one of my biggest habit is that I don't finish projects They seem very, very exciting. This is for as long as I can remember. It's really, really exciting at the beginning, but then been there, done that, I am bored. I can even think when I was in school, at the beginning of the semester, my grades were 100%. I was like, a, am hi, my name is Delphi, I'm a nerd. And by the end of the semester, I couldn't give two forks about anything. I was no longer motivated. I was bored and my grades would flunk. And I could see a pattern now thinking back um, of just not finishing projects to completion. Yeah. And, And that could be one of the top two things. It could be you have blocks towards it. Or the first one, which we're going to dive into first, is your goal was not aligned. And so one of the things about having your goal aligned is what is the why? Why is it important for you to do that? What is actually the driving force? Because no matter what our goal is, if our goal is to create this kick-ass webpage that is going to draw people in, at first, we're always like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. Look at all these bright colors. This is going to be so cool. Look how fun this is to play with these pictures. You know, I feel like you're just, you're just pretending to meet me right now. (laughs) (laughs) Same, Sophie, same. (laughs) And so you're just so excited and you have that energy at first, but how are you going to keep that burn going? What's going to be the motivation that's going to keep it going? And so that's why when we're choosing our goal, we have to get really connected to the why. Why? What's the bigger purpose? Because choosing fun colors and pictures will get you so far. And then at one point, you're going to have to write the copy. (laughs) And you still need to be motivated when you're doing that. So it's important to really connect with why? What is the higher purpose of me doing this? And for a web page, obviously, it's to connect with your incredible audience. So you're always getting new leads passively. So you have one place for all of your information you can send everybody to. And when you're connecting to why, it's so important to connect into the emotions of it. Because if we know that feeling we want to feel, and we know what feeling we're really trying to drive towards, all of our steps get to be aligned with that. And that's how we really make sure we are in line with our goal. If you have random goals, you get random results. Mm -hmm. And it does come down to why, okay, why am I doing this? What is, what is an actual tangible goal? Because if you don't know why you're doing something, you don't know, then you don't know why you're doing something. You have some random goal that you heard somewhere along this, like in the online space on a podcast, somewhere on social media. And you're like, yeah, I just want that for no reason but then you get there and you're still not happy because because there was no real purpose to it yeah I don't know how many times lately I've heard that my goal is six figures and I ask why and they're like well I don't know like that's just what it's supposed to be because in all of the marketing 
they are targeting six figures. Like, hey, do you want to become a six-figure business owner? Do you want to hit this to hit six figures? Like that is the magic number right now. Um, And so when I ask, why do you want six figures? It's like, I don't know. Like that's just, and they're like, maybe, maybe financial freedom. And it's like, okay, when you hit six figures, will you have that? And what does that look like? What does financial freedom actually look like in your life? Is financial freedom enough to pay the bills? Is financial freedom enough to pay the bills plus a holiday? Is it enough to do all of the extra that you desire to do? You get to get very clear and very intentional. Like Sophie says, random random goals create random results. Did I get that? Yes, yes. You know, it's funny because the first time I hit my six-figure business, it was working behind the scene. And wow, Janine, was I ever miserable because you know what I did not have? any time (laughs) no time at all whatsoever and I was like this is not what I wanted this is no this is not for me maybe should I ask myself a few extra questions (laughs) yeah so it's six figures but I learned a lot well and for you you know that six figures is a hundred percent aligned for you but the way that you were doing it to get there was not (laughs) oh my gosh No, but we learned a lot and we did it again. So it's all good. (laughs) Now, the second reason that a lot of people aren't hitting the goals or it's not happening for them as much as they want is actually blocks. And this is blocks are basically any resistance you have to something. So like, say you wanted to go on a podcast and you're like, yeah, I want to do a podcast. And then all of a sudden you have a speaker contract to fill out with all of your lovely information. And you just get in your head about every section you need to write. Every section you're like, is this good enough? I don't know if I know enough about this. I don't know. Literally when you fill out those forms, they bring up everything to the surface. They are beautiful, beautiful magnifying glasses for for your self-worth, where you feel resistance about anything. And so that is a block. That is a super clear way to see a block. And usually blocks stem out of your personal beliefs, your worthiness, your money blocks. Those are a lot of the big main ones. And they're really dictating where you're going in your life. And they're dictating how far you're going to go. Because if you run up against a block, that's it. You're done. And it can take you forever. Like if it's in the case of the podcast speaker form, you can be literally trying to fill that out for three weeks or you can address it. Why do I feel like I don't know enough? Why do I feel like I don't have this? Like it's always enough, 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 enough comes up so much. And so if you can analyze that and actually look at what's true, because those are beliefs coming from the past. Look at what's true and start making decisions from your future and who you're becoming. Then you no longer have to stop and rewrote. You can actually block us down and keep driving. (laughs) That is such a nice way to put that instead of also at the same time overanalyzing where that block came from. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is helpful to know where it came from. Sometimes that will come up. I do not recommend you sitting there and thinking like, okay, was this this lifetime? Was this a past lifetime? Was this my parents? Is it because the stars aren't aligned? Is it about, it doesn't need to be a bigger story than it needs to be. It's, we get to address, oh, isn't that interesting? I feel that way. Do I want to continue feeling that way? Do I want to choose otherwise? If I'm choosing otherwise, what do I get to do moving forward? Choosing is probably my favorite word. Mm, Me too. I mean, having young kids, we use that all the time, even when they get in trouble. So what choice did you make to get here today? (laughs) And if we put it in the place of choice, you're no longer in the place of like, this is my big story. I'm a victim. I'm because honestly, sometimes when there's a lot of big things coming up or even small decisions that feel big. We just let it be all consuming. And we do take on that victim role. Like I have so much going on and it always happens to me. And all of these reasons why we can't accomplish something. 
But in reality, if you're always putting it in choices and when these feelings come up, you don't judge yourself for them and just realize it's a choice. It's, it's, isn't that interesting that that comes up? It comes up for everybody. Isn't that interesting that that came up today? It no longer has to actually have a hold on your sanity. It's funny. The first day back from the March break. So March break was busy. And the first day back into work, my office, aka my couch, it was, I did have a lot of things on my list. And it came to a point that day and I was like, I'm choosing to be busy right now. It's not making me happy. And I just kind of mm-hmm. you know, choose to just do nothing for the next two hours. I'm going to have a nap or watch TV. And that just made me happy. It didn't take down anything off of my to-do list. I was like, wait a minute, I'm the boss here. (laughs) This is actually a choice. And I was like, why don't I just not do it today? Yeah. It's pretty exciting. That's beautiful because then you're being very intentional with your time and self-care is on the to-do list. Looking after yourself is on the to-do list because otherwise that list probably would have taken twice as long if you would have just like slugged through it. Sometimes we have to, but Sometimes we do get a choice. We do get to be like, what are all my options? Absolutely. I am 100%. Choice is like the best word in life. Once you become come into a place of choice, it makes all of the difference. Now, when you are like taking that day and then you're like, oh, this feels good. Maybe I'll just take a week or maybe I'll just take longer. That's when the third thing that really comes in handy and that's accountability. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Accountability is everything, especially in the online space. A hundred percent. And like, I don't know if many of you know this, but Sophie's one of my accountability people. She is one of the people who keep me in line. And the wonderful thing is we both have very different strengths. So I get to be the same thing for her. Yes, exactly. Honestly, being an entrepreneur can be very lonely, but the truth is, is that it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are like doing the strategy and you're like, it's not getting there or you're setting the goals and you're like, I make it almost to the finish line. This is where accountability is everything because it can come in a couple forms. It can come in the form of literally having someone awesome like Sophie or having someone on the same journey as you where you can go back and forth and be like, hey, where are you on this goal? Does it need to be tweaked? How does it make you feel? Where... Honestly, being an entrepreneur, I always say it's like speaking a different language. (laughs) You being an online coach, an online creator, it's speaking a different language. So and having an accountability person that speaks your language makes all of the difference. (laughs) So true. (laughs) So true. There Sophie is nerding out about automations all the time. And I'm like, yes, they're amazing. I get it. You're totally not weird. (laughs) <laughs> wait a second when did we thought we, I was weird <laughs> oh, yeah. no no not that not that <laughs> weird people are my jam my that's okay jam. me too <laughs> <laughs> so there's that form of accountability or there's the accountability of using a coach or someone who's been where you are going so then what ends up happening is you don't have to do everything the bumpy road to get there. You literally get the map. You're like, here, this is what made it easier. And it's a smooth climb instead. And so that's where I was speaking earlier about it's somebody who can look at it without the emotions, without those ties that's holding your highest, your highest self accountable. It's so much easier to look at it from the outside Mm -hmm. for whatever you do. You know, I used to I still do so from time to time, but working behind the scene on an event is not the same thing as hosting an event. It's not, it's two different things, right? Because I not might not be able to see sometimes if I fall short in some places or I might be more stressed or I may not go for the big goals that I had set for myself at the beginning while working behind the scene, you remove all of the emotion from the decision and everything becomes clear. Yeah. Yeah, you're no longer getting stuck on, I got to write the best bio. I got to write all of this because 
when you are hosting it, rather than being behind the scenes, you're making it all about you. What will they think about me? Like it's basically projecting you out there. And when we get very visible, that's when all of a sudden all of these blocks and all of these feelings we feel about ourselves, it's like shining a light on something and just seeing the cracks. (laughs) All we notice is the cracks. Even though it could be a, you're a priceless piece of art, all you notice is the little cracks. And that's all you focus on. And so that's why when you're behind the scene and you're doing it for someone else, you're not even looking at the cracks. You're just like, yeah, easy, no problem, because you're disconnected from it. Accountability is definitely one of my all-time favorites. You need that. You need somebody in your life, in your space, where you can sometime, not all the time, vent a little bit. You need somebody, you know, the people that are just positive. There's just something so special about the people in the online space and we are positive we are we know that we have a choice we are motivated it's just beautiful to have those people you know around you and it's even a little like a tiny bit I need those people who are not afraid to just tell me things how they are Mm -hmm. no bullshit allowed okay just just give it to me straight right I need those people in my life. Okay, Sophie, are you just being lazy? Okay, Sophie, you need to go back on track. Okay, you were doing so good. <laughs> yeah, because if you're if you're setting those goals that are going to stretch you, that are going to be a little bit out of your comfort zone, we get like at the website, we get so excited at the beginning to do it, and then we get into the emotions and we get make it mean any something about ourselves, and that's when somebody who's your accountability partner can like pull you off and be like, Hey, remember why we did it to begin with? Remember why you started it? Connect in back with the why and let's keep going. And then you don't get stuck in the sludge and you get to create your reality, create an aligned reality. Easier. It's so true. I am absolutely loving this conversation, but I know that you also have a free gift for everyone. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, so I want to actually gift my true self avatar. And so what this is, is I've put it together and it's so fun, guys. It's so fun. It's I put together a vision board activity so that you can actually create who you're wanting to become. And so it's so important in connecting into the why, because if we're making decisions from who we are today, it doesn't actually leave room for the growth of who you're becoming. So I take you through an exercise that actually lets you map out who you're becoming, the amazing, awesome, powerful person you're becoming, so that every day when you step into the office, you get to get in that mindset. You get to come from a place of someone who's already done it, who this is the feelings when you achieve it, except you're feeling that today. And when you can tap into that, Getting to that future person actually happens so much faster and so much smoother because you're embodying it now. That is absolutely amazing. I'm going to put the details of Janine as well as her free gift just below into the show notes. So make sure that you go and grab that. I want to say thank you, Janine, for coming on the show and giving us all of these bonds today absolutely amazing and thank you everybody for listening at home uh, to another episode of the create automate and scale podcast if you found this information useful give us a review give us your comments i'd love to hear all about what your thoughts are on this podcast and i will see you next week same place same time